Me too. It has been the rally cry across the nation as more and more women and men have stepped out of the shadows, not only to get justice for the harassment they suffered, but to also end the cycle of abuse that exists from the hollowed hills of Hollywood to the back streets of our poorest communities. A new five-part PBS series, Me Too, Now What?, focuses on the issue that has turned into a national shame. And for millions of teens, the effects can last a lifetime. According to the Centers for Disease Control, behaviors like teasing and name-calling are considered normal. However, these behaviors can become abusive and develop into more serious forms of violence. A 2016 report revealed that among high school students who were dating, 21% of females and 10% of males experienced physical and or sexual violence. Now, one high school senior is shedding light on this issue in her report, Plague of Sexual Assault. Let's take a listen to her report. According to a 2015 Justice Department report, on average, there are over 300,000 victims of rape and sexual assault each year in the United States. In October of 2016, students at New Explorers High School in the Bronx addressed the issues of sexual assault in a dance performance entitled Edges. Gina Parker is a dancer and choreographer who created a choreo play called She. It focuses on sexual assault. Parker talked with students at the high school about how she came up with the concept for the performance. I'm here to talk to you today about dance and social justice, because that's what I do, that's what I work on. And so my passion is creating. And I was like, what is my main source of creating? It's choreography. I said, OK, March is a Women's History Month. April is Sexual Violence Awareness Month. How can I join the two to create a project? So I had like this epiphany. And I was like, how cool would it be to use actual women, non-dancers, um, actual survivors? So I put out um, an email blast. I sent it around to several people, and I got applicants that were willing to, you had to be willing to share your story with me, let me turn it into dance narrative and perform alongside professional dancers. After the applications came in, we did interviews. I chose four. It was a mind-blowing experience to work with these survivors. And I hired five dancers. While working with victims of sexual assault and professional dancers, Parker discovered an incident that remained hidden since her college days. I realized that after working with these women um, and doing the research that I actually had my own story of sexual violence. And I didn't even realize that until working with this project. And so I said to myself, if I didn't realize how many other women are out there that, did, that don't realize that they have been abused. The production of She it has had a profound effect on her and her fellow dancers. The second time around, I decided to push it further over into the theatrical realm. And so I wrote an entire script for it. And now it's being called a choreo play. Instead of using survivors, I used, I hired actors. I hired a director. And so now it's this big production. Through her play, Parker has promoted awareness of sexual assault at colleges, created college curriculum, and has added a character who attends high school. What are some of your thoughts on how sexual abuse is handled for college students, high school students, and then in general? I feel like colleges are getting better, so I don't want to demonize how things are handled on college campuses. However, um, unfortunately, it's not handled well. And that's one of the reasons why I created She. So it is being used as a resource for college campuses. I've created a curriculum 
we uh, go to college campuses and we present the work or I set it on the students or I do talks or workshops with the students. So it is a tool that's being used, an education tool, but through art. What have you noticed within your own school culture? Is there, do you, ha do you know people? You don't have to say anybody's names, I don't want that. I want to, do you know people that have experienced sexual abuse um, or assault in school? Is this something that you guys talk about? Is it, and if you do know of someone, how was it handled? Um, well, basically the reason I wanted to do this story because there's a lot of people I know who've been sexually assaulted in their, like in high school or some, one of my friends, they were in middle school. So it's like, sexual assault, they mostly look at it as an adult issue because it mostly has to do with adults, but kids can assault kids, they just don't know it. So um, one of my friends, I'ma call her Becky, she basically was in a relationship with this boy and he always would pressure her, like, oh, give me a kiss, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And at our age, it's like, oh my God, they're goals, that's so cute. But sometimes it's like pressure turns into like force. Mm -hmm. And sometimes girls are so like in love and we're young, so we're looking for love. Mm -hmm. And some girls, they look for love in the wrong places. So it's like at our age, we can't really say if we've been assaulted or not. There's a lack of education. And that's another reason why I'm using this show as an education tool, not just on college campuses. So the plan is to eventually turn it into a curriculum that can be used for high school students and then seventh and eighth grade. It's not just about the act of sex. It is what goes around it. It's not just about diseases. It's just not about like how a baby is made. It's talking about what is a relationship? What is a positive relationship versus a negative relationship? Once you're in a negative relationship, how do, what are the tools to get out of it and building those uh, strategic toolkits with students and so that you guys, all of us, have a comprehensive knowledge of violence against women, sexual violence against women, different forms of domestic abuse. While working on the choreo play, she, Parker uncovered deep wounds within herself. She is using her art as a vehicle to bring awareness of the silent plague of sexual assault of women. This is Arianne Holly reporting for Youth Empowerment Television. I'm pleased to be joined by youth empowerment reporter Ariane Holly from New Explorers High School and the choreographer and dancer whose words moved the piece you just saw, Jenna Parker. Ladies, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. So, Ariane, what was that experience like being the reporter and finding out about this amazing story that was happening? For me, it was, it was very moving and very enlightening because... I'm a dancer myself, and to know that there's dancers who go through sexual assaults, and it's just a wow factor for me. So meeting her and just trying to interview her about her work and to find out that she has been sexually assaulted herself, it was really inspiring that she overcame it and she's a voice for young women like myself. Jenna, that was some really powerful stuff that you presented, um, you. that you were talking about, and also through the performance. Why was it so important to not only bring this to high school students, but to bring it to high school, I mean, college students, but to bring it to high school students? So um, I believe the statistics are one in five uh, high school students or adolescents will be uh, sexually assaulted at some point within their high school or adolescence. And so originally the, um, my choreo play only had um, stories of college and uh, childhood abuse and um, you know, um, domestic violence. However, after doing so much research, I found out that it's extremely prevalent with adolescents. So I felt the need to um, not only add a character, but also talk to high school students and um, like I said in the video, eventually I uh, work on a curriculum for high school students. And so, Ariane, maybe you could answer this better. What's been the response to having seen the video and participating in this curriculum? Um, well, for me, it's been a very good response and opportunity mm -hmm. for me. In my school, my, in my school, we are very women power. 
So we have my principal, Ms. Grevenberg. We have the assistant principals, Ms. JD and Ms. Paula, who are all powerful women, and they backed me up on even doing this piece because it was one of the pieces that pushed the envelope during the time, because mm -hmm. I did it my junior year, and that was during all of, you know, the big movements about sexual assault. So after speaking with her and being a part of her high school curriculum, a lot of, like, my guidance counselors in my school have been helping the girls in my school, even though it doesn't happen, they still are educating the people in our school about this type of thing. Of, of course, and that, I think that's incredibly important to make sure that everyone has an understanding. Yeah. But speaking of everyone, there does seem to be such a heavy emphasis on girls, teaching girls, making sure girls are aware. Um, does this curriculum that you've created, does it have a space for young men? Because they're also part of the equation. So that is definitely something that um, me and my team have been working on this time around, um, especially with everything that's coming out with Me Too and everything. And, you know, the men are being accused, but it's like, what are the resources for men? They have to recover just mm -hmm. like we have to recover, maybe not in the same way, but we can't just accuse men and then say, okay, what, just leave them. You're banished from society exactly, or something. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So even, you know, with She, from the very beginning, it was about bringing in an entire community, men and women. And actually, some of the most amazing responses have been even from men. Um, just one example, one of the nights of the show, we had a group of 70 high school students, uh, male and female. And one of the high school students, male, he stood up at the end and he was like, you know what, I have mistreated women in the past, but I'm actually going to think about my actions before I do them from now on in terms of women. So I think it's about the awareness, letting men see it and build empathy and also supplying tools for men to talk to each other, um, men to talk to men, and men to talk to women as, as well, but also offering, finding those resources, those empowerment resources for men to be educated and also um, re-educated. Mm -hmm. Ladies, I wanna thank you both so much for the work that you did, the great reporting. You're going to be coming for my job soon. I can feel it, Ariane. And Jenna, the piece looks absolutely thank amazing. You. Thank and you. hopefully we can see the curriculum you developed in more high schools. Again, I want to thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. you for having me. <laughs>